Aloha and welcome to Better Government. Straight from the Hawaii State Capitol, I'm Representative Gene Ward, and today I have the pleasure, now that the election is over, for two new faces that have come to the Capitol. Today we have Representative Bob McDermott. Bob, welcome to the show. Thanks, Gene. Thanks and for having us. Representative Richard Foley. Thank Richard, you. Great to be here. Congratulations, Bob. Congratulations. Uh, these are two new faces in the Minority Caucus, uh, which now we have four out of seven, brand new, and four out of seven, believe it or not, are below 33 years of age. That means, gentlemen, we have the Brains, Youth, and Energy Caucus, except Bob is maybe less new than you are, Richard. <laughs> Bob, uh, let's start with you. You have been, you were here before <laughs> when, and give us some of your background. Oh, no, it's handsome, though, I am uh, Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, thanks for having us, Gina. Thank you for your mentorship and help throughout the years. You helped me in 96 when I first ran and got elected. You called me every day, encouraging me. I haven't forgotten that. And uh, I'm still very grateful to you. And now that I'm Minority Leader Emeritus, I'm going <laughs> to nag you, and I'm going to nag you. At, no, no. Yeah. Give us yeah. some, of the, some of the people so, who may not remember your background, Bob. And so, and it's a real pleasure to be here with Richard. He's a, a bright star of our party, and I expect big things from this young man. Um, I'm really excited to have Richard as part of our caucus. Uh, got elected in 96, uh, served uh, in town, more of the Foster Village area, Foster Village community. Uh, Halava, Aliamanu area. I uh, suffered from an overdose of testosterone and decided to run for Congress. <laughs> was unfortunate in that effort. Ended up getting the best job in, uh, I've ever had, which is working at the Navy League, Honolulu Council of Navy League. We're the largest Navy League in the world. We have a fantastic uh, mission. We help young men and women. Uh, our motto is uh, no red tape, all green lights. We have a great president, Dave Livingston. We have a great board of directors. And going from politics into a nonprofit was remarkable because in the political life, we're, it's kind of a taking profession, if you will. It, it, not by, the, by the, the very nature you're asking for people's time, you're asking for their attention, you're asking for money. That's the necessary evil to get elected, if you will. Mm. I mean, you can't do that without. You go to a charity, you're surrounded by givers, people who give their time, their attention, their money, mm. only because they want to help others. So that is, and I kind of overdosed on this part. In my younger days, it was all about me, unfortunately. Uh, now I really understand the meaning of service, and I'm, I hope to be a much better legislator this time around than I was last time, which. By the way, I wasn't too bad. I mean, I led the, <laughs> I led the uh, fight for repair and maintenance at Radford High School, brought repair and maintenance and the impact aid at the time the law was changed. And certainly uh, Mark Takai got that done, but certainly without our making a public issue, it wouldn't have happened. Mm. So knowing what I know now, I expect to be much better at Gee, serving my community. Yeah. And well, having worked at the Navy League, someone just doesn't suddenly show up and become the Navy League Executive Director. What did you do before that? And I think it's something that we all have in common. Oh, well, we're all veterans. And wh where did I, was you a, I was a Marine from 1981 to 85, enlisted. That's what brought me to Hawaii. That's what enabled me to meet my beautiful wife here. Uh, went to Chaminade, went back into the Marine Corps for four years, did the first Gulf War, and then- You became uh, an officer. I was an officer, yeah. Went back in as a, an, an officer and uh, then worked in the coffee industry and met you and ran for office, and uh, the that rest brings us history. here today. <laughs> Except you also have a master's degree in, in business, business administration. That's correct. Right. And the economy is going to be a big issue, which we're going to talk about later. Uh, Mr. Foley, uh, an interesting background you also have. Uh, could you tell us a bit, and the people who may not have heard of Richard Foley? Uh, well, um, I am uh, definitely one of the younger members of the caucus, and I, I certainly hope that's uh, that's that's an advantage, not a not a weakness. Uh, moving forward, it's it's absolutely great to be here with uh, with uh, two veterans, uh, mm. with a marine and a fellow soldier over here, Gene. With, uh, Army, with as it was, yes. Yeah, uh, uh, being in uh, serving um, in uniform is definitely something that uh, is. Uh, one of the highlights of my life, I, I continue to serve as the uh, paralegal for the uh, 442nd 100th Infantry Battalion over at Fort Shafter. 
The uh, famous 442nd. The famous 442nd. It, it's, it's actually the reason why I joined the Army as opposed to the Navy. My grandfather and uh, his uh, four brothers were all Navy pilots, and I was leaning uh, to going into the Navy. But when I came across this unit with uh, uh, its unique history here in Hawaii, that's what, that's what made me go into the Army because I read their history, and I thought this is something i got to be part of. Um, well, my, my background is uh, I, I was raised in the uh, small island kingdom of Tonga until I was uh, 15 years old. Um, and that's actually something that is unique because the kingdom of Tonga uh, used uh, Hawaii's 1852 constitution as uh, the foundation for its constitution today. So mm -hmm. that is, uh, I have the, um, that unique uh, privilege of uh, having said that I actually grew up under uh, the constitution of the kingdom of Hawaii. Um, you know, I, I, I went to school with uh, um, several of uh, the king's uh, grand grandchildren and uh, several heirs to titles of nobility back home. So, I, it, 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 it's, um, you, you learn definitely a lot of things that, that make me feel extra connected uh, here to, to Hawaii. And also the um, uh, uh, Duke Hanamoku uh, actually came to uh, uh, Tonga several times and was with my uh, uh, my great grandmother's uh, brother and actually was the f gave him his first surfboard and and taught him how to surf uh, back in the day. Um, you know, came out here, went to school at BYU Hawaii. Um, born and raised a farmer, uh, where I spend most of my spare time when I can. What kind of farming do you do? Uh, just all your your uh, things that I'm used to. Um, uh, various types of yams, uh, tapioca, mm. taro. Uh, we did do basil for for a while. Um, coconuts, bananas. That's going to be invaluable. Uh, if I can interject a bit in the session that's coming up for the self-sustaining, uh, grow our own food. Mm. There are very few people who have had their hands in the soil the way that you've had in the legislature. So coming as a farmer is going to be a unique uh, position, and your MBA is going to be very helpful for the economy and other issues. But you said that um, you were, we were talking off camera, and you said that uh, you played rugby. Mm. Is that something that uh, will be helpful as a legislator? Um, well, I think, yes. It, it, in, in politics, I think you have to be absolutely firm and set in what it is you believe and that you mm. can't waver. Um, in my family, I'm, I'm the smallest of, uh, of uh, six boys. Um, you know, it's uh, youngest, it's the smallest, or physically? Well, the physically the smallest. Physically the smallest. There's eight kids. I'm number three. Um, my brother right after me is about twice my size. So, and my two older brothers are a lot bigger than I am. So, it, you know, I always grew up being kind of the one that got that got picked on and, and pushed around. And my mom always used to worry about me playing rugby back in high school because um, I was always the smallest guy on the field. So you kind of develop a a certain level of fortitude that says, you know, I'm going to I'm going to do this and nobody's going to stop me. Um, and I think in, in, in politics, you, you have to have that same um, those same set uh, that that same fortitude um, and uh, firmness in, in the values and principles that you believe in so that where you can't be moved. Um, and that's that's where that's what I believe. I have my core values and principles and I'm absolutely determined to uh, to stand firm mm. on them. And you both served in a war zone. In fact, in, in the war, what, which uh, battle uh, fields were you in? Um, I was, uh, I was um, deployed <coughs> under Operation Enduring Freedom. Uh, I was uh, located in the uh, headquarters um, uh, in the Middle East for uh, uh, the Coalition Land Forces uh, in Kuwait. Uh, mm. And we were responsible pretty much just, uh, for the entire Middle Eastern um, area. Uh, which included the uh, the wars in Iraq and, and Afghanistan. So um, I definitely had the opportunity to to uh, be part of uh, of supporting both of those um, engagements. And before you were there, Representative McDermott was there, I believe. Uh, mm. First Gulf War, uh, ninety one. I was mm. in Saudi Arabia, um, Desert Storm, Desert Shield. But it was a different dynamic than what Richard had. I mean, before we went in, we had half a million men and women on the ground, overwhelming force. Mm. And 
the initial assault, and then they were just streaming across the border, surrounding. I never had to fire a shot, uh, so my dynamics a little different. Um, we, in uh, I think we can draw a lesson from that going forward. When we, if we're going to commit men and women in uniform, we need to be all in. Uh, I think on a geopolitical scale, we're not all in on Iraq. Or we're out now, but <coughs> Afghanistan, we're not all in. And if you're not all in, you're going to get these horrendous injuries and open mm -hmm. our men and women to higher risk, which um, I see these men and women come back. Uh, triple amputees, as I have a friend who's a triple amputee. Uh, it's, uh, if you go in with overwhelming force, uh, as George H.W. Bush did, the, f the first Bush, you crush them. Mm. Uh, if we, Shock and awe, I believe. Well, if we, we, can, we can beat anybody with a light footprint, but it's the sustaining power and having mm. the infrastructure in place. Otherwise, you open it. You can't. Mm. It's, it, it's awesome when we do it right. Um, I think we made a mis mistake in the way we went in with a light footprint. Now, hindsight's twenty twenty, of course. But Afghanistan, I, I, I see that, and we're pulling out, but we're keeping guys there. Mm. We're signaling to them. We're leaving. Uh, what happens when we leave? Mm. Is it, you know, as a father of a young man who just got out of the Marines and a father of two kids getting ready to go into service, I said, well, it's, you know, if you're not in it to win it, don't be in it, right? I mean, that, that's my philosophy. Already. You know, you're, you're really scratching below the surface of a Vietnam veteran who, when you talk about divisiveness, when you talk about mm -hmm. uh, to be in Vietnam, to be out of Vietnam, the country was really divided. We think after this election, the country is divided. It's nothing compared to during the Vietnam War when people were. At, we came back as soldiers, literally disrespected and having none of the acknowledgement of having served or even mentioning that we're veterans. It was only many years later that now being a veteran, which interestingly, and I announced this to the public, that this is half of the veterans in the State House of Representatives. Representative Foley, Representative McDermott, and myself represent what otherwise would be Representative Takai, Representative Ito, and Representative Suki, who I believe are left. All the others have gone. And it's typical of what mm -hmm. now in the U.S. Congress also there is a right. declining uh, number of uh, service members. Gentlemen, that's a bit of the background. How about the district? Uh, how many people know where Eva Beach and Iroquois Point and all those? Give us a, a sense um, of your district. Sure, my district is... is uh, Literally half of Eva Beach, uh, Fort Weaver mm -hmm. Road. You go down Fort Weaver Road from the freeway, and it's everything on the Diamond Head side of Fort Weaver Road to include Iroquois Point. It's a very diverse district. Uh, it's a very local district. The people would ask me, "What's it look like?" I say, "It looks like my family." My and your wife. family looks <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> what does your family look like? <laughs> it's uh, not like me. <laughs> it's a uh, mixed race. Uh, Chop Suey, Hapa Haole, kind of Your folks. wife is Samoan. Right? Yes, she's uh, pure Samoan, born in Pongo Pongo. Mm. And uh, I'm blessed to have her. She's the reason I win, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> she's the reason. She's my biggest supporter, biggest fan. But it's it's a mixed. We have a lot of Polynesians there, a lot of Hawaiians, mm. a lot of Samoans, uh, uh, a lot of folks of mixed backgrounds. There's a large uh, Filipino constituency in uh, one portion of Eva Beach, and they're wonderful people, very patriotic. Uh, they mm -hmm. go to church every Sunday, and I make sure I'm there to see them. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, so it's a great district. I like to tell people it's kind of like a Fosse district, if you will. Frank yeah. had okay. to touch with those people. And That'll resonate with a lot of viewers yeah. who remember Frank Fosse as a, as a real part of our political history. Yeah, and that's the kind of people that they, they, they work hard, they go to church, they care about their state. And um, when you knock on their door, they want to know how you can help them. When I was campaigning, they said, well, you know, the street sign's out over here. Uh, let me take care of that. And it was remarkable. The street sign was fixed within two days, which is the speed of light for government work. But, of course, <laughs> because there was a mayoral election, I think that also helped because mm -hmm. I copy the people. And, you know, all those things that you taught me. But that's your job go. is to make yeah. sure that the needs of the people get to the government and the needs of government get to the people and you're sort of the conduit. You're a facilitator. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And they have to feel comfortable with you. Your constituents have to be, feel comfortable that if they call you, you're going to get right on it and, uh, and, and address the issues. You know, people think that we're down here and we're dealing with all these 
you know, glamorous issues maybe that's in the paper. Uh, the issue I'm dealing with right now that is primary concern is a Pacific beetle roach infestation. Say a, that again. A Pacific beetle roach infestation. In one of the neighborhoods, there's been an outbreak of these cockroaches that come from a piece of vacant land and come into the people's homes. And so we've got the Department of Health out there. We're looking at the permitting of the, the land when this drainage ditch was built. Is there a requirement that they keep it cleared? Because if you don't keep it cleared, that's mm. all food for these insects and birds and rats and things of that nature. That's what we do. We're there to serve the people. We're their servant and servant leadership. Do you have a leg up on those beetles? Uh, I mean, are you guys winning the battle? Or, you know, because we have cokey frogs in <clears throat> literally taking over the big island. Because if you don't catch them at a particular juncture, <laughs> they literally take over. Are you guys doing yeah, well, okay? I've never heard of this before. But well, we're working with the community uh, ownership, and they've been out spraying. And uh, we're going to try and get it cut down and mm -hmm. then sprayed. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's the objective. Uh, not only does it cut down, but then you cut it down, you have to remove the rubbish because that's the food source for them. Mm. So you got to clear the land. Uh, a controlled burn would be the best idea, but then, oh my goodness, you can't do that. So th that's what we do. The, you know, that affects people. Have, literally thousands of roaches coming up with their vinyl fence over, uh, I shouldn't say thousands, millions. I've seen them. Millions. Before. Millions coming up their fence, over their fence, into their yard, wow. and into their air conditioning ducts and all over. So Sounds like a movie, Richard. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that that's what we do. The, and keep 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 us posted on that because if that gets out of control, then all of our districts mm -hmm. are subject yeah. to that. Before I go to the North Shore and, and Representative Fali, uh, one of the things that you're going to bring to the legislature, and you didn't mention this, but I wanted to mention you. You have eight children. You've got to have the heart of I a father. You if any, if anybody. Richard, you just got married, what, a year ago or something? A year, like? last year, January. I mean, I've been married for decades. I only have one child, but he has eight, eight children. Mm -hmm. The heart of a father, you got to be the father of fathers in the legislature of 2013. Well, it is a uh, blessing to be a dad. And as you start your fatherhood journey, uh, it is the most rewarding thing you'll ever do. Um, and um, people say, well, you're blessed, and, and I don't want to go into the particulars, but um, well, I am blessed. Uh, people say, good for you. I th they have no idea. Uh, I can't imagine. It's just the logistics of feeding and transport. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like more of the military logistic about, you know, taking <laughs> the eight lives and maintaining them mm -hmm. and keeping them and nurturing them and growing them and schooling them and educating them beyond uh, the high school level has got to be. Well, you do the best you can, and then as they get older, uh, you find that they have, as all parents out there will obviously acknowledge, they, they have a mind of their own, of course, and uh, somewhere along the high school years, you, you, have, you can give them guidance and mentorship, but certainly once they hit their 20s, um, the best you can do is lay out options for them. Mm. This is, mm. These are your options. If you go down this path, this is the probabilities of these things happening. This, but it's up to them to make their decision. Mm. And sometimes they make good decisions and sometimes they don't. My youngest is eight, so he's still the uh, light of my life, my wingman. <laughs> the wingman. <coughs> Well, speaking of wings, we're going to fly to the North Shore because we're going to yes. be running out of time. We want to hear about the North Shore and Representative Folly. Um, well, I just I just kind of want to go back to, to something there that um that the uh, Beatles. Bob, yes, <laughs> and we actually had uh, you know a similar issue, and 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 uh, Bob's exactly right. Where you ninety, it, it's just like the military. You know, ninety five percent <coughs> of the time you're preparing for that three to five percent of action that will occur. Mm. And um, it's, it's the same thing here. It's like there's 95% of the time where there's nothing really major going on, but you're always preparing for when that 3 to 5% uh, time of big action is actually going on. And we had, we had a similar um, issue out in my district in uh, Waihole, where uh, the eastern boundary of, of my district, uh, where we had the big flooding uh, recently, mm -hmm. and um, a bunch of logs had clogged the, the Waihole Bridge, and um, there was a nursery uh, on the side of uh, Waihole Stream that got flooded out pretty bad, and there was 
severe uh, damage to, to that small business out there. And then there was, um, when that all kind of cleared up, all the logs and all the debris was still packed underneath the bridge. And there was a forecast for more rain coming. Um, but there, the, the city said it was the state's responsibility to clear out the bridge. The state said, well, it's not their responsibility. So there was always this back and forth. And uh, the small business uh, people there, the, the Miranda family that run that small business were you know, concerned about getting flooded out again. I mean, uh, they're about 70% of their nursery was destroyed by the flood. And that's, a, you know, when they had come into the community, it had definitely improved the quality of life of what was going on in that area. So um, I was really concerned and I didn't want them to leave. So I, I, I stopped by there and asked, you know, what can I do to help? And they said, well, this, this rain's come in and we still have all these logs that are blocking the Waihole Bridge and city, city's not doing anything about it, state's not doing anything about it. So we did what um, I think uh, was the only thing we could do. We uh, took off our, our, our shoes and shirt and jumped into the stream and cleared out about maybe about 12, 12 or 13 tons of logs that were blocking you individually um, or you and your team or me and the the, the two sons of the Miranda family and um, one of their friends so mm. we we got in there and spent about well, five or six hours just pulling out logs from un underneath the bridge and and there were a ton of roaches under there too mm. it was it's hands-on legislation did you go out and spray the bugs yourself no I didn't <laughs> <laughs> So, but that's that. That's something I think uh, people people really expect of us as leaders is actually to do something, you know, and to not just mm -hmm. point the finger and uh, say, "That's talk, talk, yeah, talk, yeah." Talk, talk, yeah. Um, you know, they they want us to do something, but I that that's just a thought that came up uh, while Bob was talking. There's um, well, my district goes begins in Waihole, and um, goes all the way up through uh, North Shore and includes all of Haleiwa and a portion of Wailua. So it's a, it's a very diverse district, a very unique district. And of course, um, it uh, carries the distinction of uh, remaining one of the few parts of Oahu that are, that's still rural. So, Kind of the Texas of Oahu, so to speak. It's a huge mm -hmm. district, isn't it? In terms of geographically, geographically I think it's the largest uh, um, house district on the island of Oahu. Mm. So walking door to door must be a, just a piece of cake. Oh, man. That's... <laughs> well... You know, the, uh, the, the great community we have out there certainly makes it worthwhile uh, going and, and, and talking to mm. people. Um, we have a very diverse community, um, a very vibrant and uh, outgoing community. So it, it's definitely uh, a community I would recommend that anybody in the state of Hawaii should get to know. The last series of questions that we were going to do today, we're probably running out of time, but if, if you mention some of the things that your district would like to see or issues that are coming up in the 2013 legislature that would be important to your district. Uh, Richard, do you want to add? Is continuing? Uh, I would say a, a broader, a broader um, and more meaningful support for our education and economic sectors. And of mm. course, those two are, are very uniquely tied to uh, our, our inextricably tied together. Uh, we can't um, advance our economic situation if we don't increase our education, uh, the strength of our education uh, system, and we can't increase the, uh, the strength of our education system without having a healthy economy to support the advances in education that we need. Um, so that, that is broadly for, for the entire area, and probably uniquely and specifically to my district would be um, uh, a little more support for our Kahuku Red Raiders, uh, which have done many great and outstanding things uh, for the uh, for the state of Hawaii, both academically and athletically. And it would be uh, great to see um, a little more support to help us continue to um, grow and ability uh, Kahuku Kahuku's high school's ability to to perform outstanding. Instead of just being state champions, they're going to be world champions. Yes. So you know, we, we, we <laughs> carry the, the, the unique distinction of uh, having the most uh, recently, you know, in light of uh, Kogu, the Red Raiders uh, win in the state championship in football, uh, Kogu High School has the, the highest number of uh, 
football players represented in the NFL than any other hmm. high school in the country. Interesting. I'm sure we'll hear about that on the floor of the House of Representatives. <laughs> <laughs> Representative McDermott, any particular issues that you see from the district point of view or 2013 that should be uh, mentioned? You're running out of time, so very briefly, Campbell High School was uh, built for 1,000 students. We now have 3,000 oh. students. Ooh. Yeah, that's a, that's a that's a challenge. We don't have problems. We have challenges, which are opportunities to let other people shine. Good attitude. And we're going to make some inroads there. Currently, there's a uh, Senator Sparrow got a uh, CIP project to improve the facilities to a degree, and it's sitting in the governor's office. Boy, if any school needs it, uh, Campbell does. And interestingly, um, Campbell presents the same sort of challenges that Radford did 20 years ago. So. Uh, it's the right place, right time, right man for the job, I suppose. But servant leadership is the attitude of going there. So Campbell High School, education, of course, uh, the, the other school district facility improvement, and then staying ahead of the curve on the transportation issues. And I think you're about out of time. There's never uh, out, uh, not enough time to thank you guys for not only putting yourself in, but getting elected, serving. And I think what we'll do at another time is talk about what we see happening in 2013. I know in my district in Hawaii, Kai, the economics are a big, big issue. And we have some, we don't have beetles running around, but we've got a number of other infestations of which uh, I will mention the next time around. But thank you for tuning in to Better Government. This is Representative Gene Ward, who has interviewed newly entering freshman Richard Foley from the North Shore, and Representative Bob McDermott returning a representative to the Hawaii State Legislature. But remember, this is for better government. If there's feedback that you need to get to us, give us a ring. We're all listed, our emails. I've got my cell phone listed on my uh, personal uh, uh, greeting on my office. But you are the people of Hawaii. You deserve the best, and that's why we put better government straight from the Hawaii State Capitol. So thank you for viewing, and aloha.